All right, everybody, let's talk about cracks in hooves. It's a pretty big deal. There's a lot of uh, horses out there with cracks running up uh, from the bottom to the top in their hooves. And I've shown you guys a few pictures here. And uh, I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to have a good talk on exactly why it happens, how we can make it better and what likely makes it worse. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at uh, the first picture that I wanna show you. And this is a hoof that I've been working on for the past four months now. And we can see that we're going to we're going to walk through the progress uh, that is being made and how we can determine that progress is actually being made. So first picture is uh, a frontal view of the of the of the, the hoof when originally uh, I saw it, I'd already given it a very slight trim because it was in a state that I just couldn't leave it and didn't get any pictures before that. But if you were to take a look at this picture, you'll see that I've sort of rounded off the front pillars of the hoof wall. If you're wondering what pillars are, um, I have a bunch of hooves here and we can take something like this and we can see that right here, is the toe and on either side the 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock position roundabouts is what's called the pillars. So the pillars on this foot have been shaved back. Uh, when you don't do that and you let them grow out you can get sort of what this foot has where it gets sort of this flat um, bit along the top and then the pillars are um, essentially kind of long. That's why it gets square because these are long but the hoof the toe itself is actually about the right length anyways more on that in a little bit but the point is, is that this first picture isn't as exactly presented by the fact that the pillars were long and shaved off so you can also see in this picture that there are same some high rasp marks um, from a trim from a while back so we'll talk about that in a little bit um, and we can see that there is a massive crack down the middle now, cracks in the middle um, are one of the easier cracks, in my opinion, to fix. And they are caused essentially through mechanical sort of distortion and the mechanical leverage from that distortion. If you're wondering what mechanical leverage is, if we were to take, so this is just a hoof pick, but if you were to just uh, imagine that, that something is here and something is here and I have my finger here, by pushing down here, I have more mechanical leverage than I would have is if the, what's called the fulcrum, the point that we lever from is here. This would have more mechanical leverage. Somewhere in the middle would be 50-50. But somewhere over here would give me a lot of mechanical leverage. So a lot of power in relation to the other end. So when we get a hoof that's kind of where this square bit on the front exists, we have what's called mechanical leverage on the pillars. Now, going back to the picture, we can see that the crack is right in between where the two pillars are, right in the middle. So what's happening is, is the mechanical leverage of the pillars being long actually ends up splitting the hoof. Um, and that's a big deal. So when it does split, then stuff can kind of get up into there and that creates a cavity and then it just gets worse. So to give you one more example of exactly how these splits work, I have a piece of cedar here. Now this cedar is slightly cracked. I think if I do this, you'll be able to tell that it's kind of coming apart, kind of there. And essentially cedar, or most woods for that matter, um, and hooves have a lot in common, they have a grain. If you were to ever look at uh, hooves, sort of a cross section, um, you can see uh, that they will have sort of a grain that runs. And it's, it's all, you know, generally sort of this vertical grain that runs down the hoof no different than wood. So just like the cedar piece is cracked and sort of broken off and it's very easy to continue to snap it like that, then we can see that uh, uh, the hoof would react the same. Which is why if we were going to make kindling, uh, we would hit the cedar up top like that and crack it open and not from the uh, side of the grain. We would go with the grain. So. With that very simple demonstration in place, 
we can consider this picture once again and see that when the the pillars sort of pull, you know, pull the toe apart, it can only continue to get worse. So on that note, um, one of the ways that I see people thinking about dealing with it is actually to cut a V where the crack is. Um, oddly enough, this is actually the worst thing you could do, because if we think about if we have sort of a break here and we didn't want this to crack further, we wouldn't weaken this point here. We would round off these edges so there would be less give uh, or less of a spot to to create that mechanical leverage and leave the middle quite strong. So that's 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 a little bit of science there if we if we think about um, how that works. But bottom line is cutting a V uh, and and weakening the area actually isn't what fixes it. It's actually removing the mechanical leverage of the sides. Now, interestingly enough, I've got a bit of a stump piece off of a tree. And uh, this one has a little bit of the toe missing. It all looks like a hoof, right? A little bit of the toe missing. And uh, we're gonna go into the next picture uh, that shows some of the deterioration of where that is. And funnily enough, this thing sort of shows that, but what we can view on the inside here where the grain is, is, is sort of the weakness that comes with cracks and it starts to open up and things kind of get inside and it starts to rot a little bit. And just like wood, there will be a weak point that starts to just deteriorate. So likely it's not that it was rotting and deteriorating in the first place. Most likely the pillars got too long. It started to split and deform upwards maybe a little bit and then stuff started to get in. So we really, really, really want to make sure that our, our feet that we trim and we look at have a nice um, sort of rounded pillar, something very symmetrical so that the toe doesn't look square. It will look uh, more round. So something to think about. So in the second picture, we can start to see the rot. Now this next picture, it was taken uh, a little bit after that, about, I'd say two months later, and we can start to see how it's growing down. Now these cracks, you can start to fix them and you can start to work your way through them a little bit like in that first one where you get rid of the pillars and round things out so that when the horse goes to step forward, they don't, um, they don't pull these pillars up, which ends up cracking the middle. And uh, we, can, we can see in the third picture that um, we're making a little bit of progress here in bringing down some healthy growth. Uh, and that's what we're going to be looking for throughout the whole process of fixing the foot anyways. But the most important thing, the absolute most important thing is to remove the mechanical leverage. Okay, so moving on to the next picture. Uh, we can see here uh, uh, roundabouts, roundabouts the same time as the last picture was taken. Uh, we can see a big chip taken out. And that's where we come back to the branch uh, kind of thing, where the, the rot or the, the, the part of the foot that is receiving the most sort of, you know, this would have come off a tree like that, you see would have come off a tree like that. And so this would have been a break point. This would have been sort of a, a hard break point. It would have been cut this way and this bit here, which is, I find it very interesting that hooves are a lot like wood. So we can actually look at a lot of pieces of wood and find why, why it usually fails, unless you were cut upwards here. And even then, yeah, it might still sort of find that there's a lot of leverage because of the weight. The weight of the branches up top, just like the horse, when they go forward, when they step forward, that the most amount of leverage is right here on the front. Kind of an odd prop, but I really like it. Okay, so there's some loss of hoof wall there. 
uh, that we can uh, mostly attribute to something that's just plain rotten. It needs to go anyways, but we can't remove it all yet. The reason we don't really want to remove it all is because it kind of makes that whole front of the foot a lot weaker. And if they go to bump into things and stuff like that, you could cause some internal damage. We might as well just leave it. We're going to grow it out anyways. Okay, next picture. Um, when we look at this one, this one is the next month, so it's a month later. And if you look throughout these pictures, um, you can see that from the coronet band, which is this hairline, we can see that the, the, the hoof wall itself is actually growing down a little straighter rather than to be flared from the top. And the mechanical distortion or flare uh, is what causes more mechanical leverage when they go to walk or turn and stuff like that because there's a bit more of an angle there. So that angle sort of sticks out rather than being more straight up and down. Now horses' hooves are conical, they're not cylindrical, so there is going to be a little bit of a, an angle there, but we don't want a lot, otherwise we'll be causing um, uh, uh, too much mechanical leverage, which in turn causes cracks and... and, and uh, chipping off the pieces. So we can still see down in the bottom that is still quite rotten and likely this this hoof um, is rotten you know most of the way up and until it properly grows out it will continue to present like that. Okay so moving on to the next one which is the next month we're not seeing um, a huge amount of difference in what that crack looks like but what we are seeing is there's continued better growth coming down and so what happens is is when this hoof wall grows down and not flared out it grows downwards along the internals of the hoof it ends up sort of being like velcro and uh, just so happens I have some velcro here by pure chance and when we have the Velcro sort of connecting up really, really tight, you know, where it's, it's, it's tight together, then nothing really fits in there. But if you've got this Velcro sort of peeling off and being out here, then there's going to be a lot of room for stuff to grow in. So as we bring this Velcro, so this is maybe the top down, this is up here is the cornet band or something, and we come downwards, making that Velcro stick better till finally it just ends up pushing everything out, which is what we want. So this picture here uh, is a pre-trim. So I took a picture, I cleaned it up, took a picture before, and uh, we'll see in the next picture how I have again completely taken off the pillars and uh, rounded everything off nicely because we're trying to get rid of that flare um, that that causes that mechanical leverage to push it up and off of the internals of the foot. So the more often that you can do this, the faster and, and smoother that crack will grow out. We can still see there's about a one inch crack um, and I would expect it to continue to be cracked up until where you can see the periopal line. Um, and that is also where the flare starts to really dissipate and become an, a straight up and down um, hoof wall. Not straight up and down, but you know, mostly straight up and down. And that's probably where we'll see that crack end because the internal structure, the cellular structure in there will be compact and strong. And, um, and, and we'll also be, because we're getting rid of that mechanical leverage along the way, it should stop trying to pry apart and we're really just trying to grow things out by pushing it out and not having the hoof wall come up upon stepping. So that's kind of a crash course in, in cracks and uh, a little bit of theory on why they happen and how to fix them. Um, but it is actually, in my opinion, that simple. Um, for the most part, not every part, but for the most part, I'd say there's very few deviations from that idea on why it should work. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them down below or call or email or whatever, and I will be happy to answer them. Overall, I think this hoof is coming along really well, and I'll give you guys another update in probably a couple months. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.